I'm Thomas Diaz. I'm, I, I run the Fab Lab in Barcelona, and I'm a co-founder of a project called Smart Citizen. I, I talked about it today. And, uh, and what's a Fab Lab? I, I well, guess lots of people don't know it. Well, uh, the Fab Lab is an acronym for Fabrication Laboratory. It's a project that started at MIT uh, at around 10 years ago. And it's basically a space where there are machines and people that can help you to make almost anything from a circuit board that can fit in your hand to an entire house. Cool. Yeah. And during your talk, you also said that the future is now. Yeah. Why, why do you think that? Well, basically, you know, the, this idea of thinking or uh, envisioning the future is very old. No? If you think about, I remember when, even older than me, than me no? but when I was a child, people were thinking that in the 2000s, the cars would fly. No, that, that's, that hasn't happened. And it actually, it may be we have gone in a little bit worse scenarios in terms of how, where we are now in the, our relationship with the planet. But taking it ahead, I think that we have today tools like uh, you know, the internet of computers that um, connected with other tools like 3D printers, so machines to make things, it can allow us to act in the future at this moment. I mean, make the future to happen at this moment. No? So, I think that we, we, can, we can stop having you know, further visions of what is going to happen in 20 years and start to make it happen now through these tools. So I think it's possible. Okay, so you say start, uh, stop with making the vision, but just do it now. Yeah, just exactly. Start acting. Yeah, because I think that a lot of the visions are just you know, are circular. No? Uh, some people bring a new idea that you know, and you can go back in time and you will find it by some philosopher or some thinker before. So now the one that wins is the one that makes it happen. And, as, uh, and also with the Fab Labs, what's, what's, what, what makes special is, 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 is that in these times, not people are only um, empowered to organize themselves, yeah. they're also empowered to produce exactly. themselves. Exactly. Now, if you think about, you know, the, again, the computers and internet, they allow you to organize better people. No? You, know, you, can, you can claim that uh, the Arab Spring has been powered by the, the ability of people being connected and articulated. But imagine if you add to this power the ability of turning information into things in a matter of a couple hours or you know a couple of days, let's say, mm -hmm. in more complex things. I mean, you have a huge power on um, people taking you know role, an active role in what the city is, what their neighborhood, what their building, their houses, everything. No, so you know we are. It's, it's very challenging. We are not there yet, but I think that it's, it's very possible. And you also talked about your smart city projects. Yeah. Uh, what is that? Well, the smart citizen is actually a, a crowd sensing project that allows people to participate in the production of information in the city. It uses a low cost sensor device that is called the smart citizen kit that people can can uh, can buy for a very low price and put it in their balconies and start to capture data about the environmental issues in their cities and share it through an online platform. And then with this platform, you actually can socialize with this data. What we think is that this in the, in the, you know, in the coming future can lead to political action. So people have a political voice based on facts, no? based, on, based on very scientific data captured by themselves. Can you themselves. give an example? Well, imagine, I, I, I use sometimes a very dumb examples because I think that people will be more intelligent. But the things that we have, think, we have thought is um, maybe, you know, for, at least in, uh, for, for instance, in Barcelona, uh, there is a big issue with tourism and people getting drunk in the streets. So mm -hmm. the neighbors can have sensors in the Ramblas. And then when the levels of, of sound, they go th uh, up from a certain level, they can tweet directly to the police or, or you know, or can make some action to avoid this kind of disturbance in the city. Also, the air quality. The air quality is a big issue in cities. And, um, and sometimes, the, um, let's say, official uh, da data sets come from sensors that are located very far away from where we walk. Mm -hmm. So if people can get these sensors near from where they interact, they can actually mm -hmm. say, look, this is the real data, not the one that is placed in a tower up yeah. there in the mountains. No? And you're going to make lots of data. You, uh, you're, you're, you also mentioned some numbers. It's, it's, it's huge. Yeah. And what way uh, do you also provide the, the, the crowd with tools uh, so, that, so they can use this data for themselves? Well, at the moment, we provide an open API that people can, can use for third-party applications. We haven't, the, let's say, designed yet these kind of tools to, to generate some meaning out of the, this data. But again, uh, I think that we, our role is to generate like a very, very basic framework. And then people can build on top of that. What we see also is like a, 
potentially data can become a currency for people, no? mm -hmm. or can become a, a way of making some kind of profit. Mm -hmm. So imagine is, instead of the city council putting some sensors and then the people paying for a service, then it's the people producing the data with sensors and then probably selling data to the city council or yeah. to the corporations. Yeah. And privacy, it's, it's, uh, th th there's, al th there's always the balance between oh. what's possible and, 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 and what we want. Well, nothing is compromised in terms of privacy because the data is actually is an, uh, is outdoors. So we are not claiming indoor data. So okay. the, the idea is that you use your house as an infrastructure, and uh, but actually the data comes from outdoors. So you don't compromise that uh, you you know you tell someone no I'm not home, but basically they can yeah, tell yeah. hey I see your light is up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but there is some noise in the kitchen. So. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. And uh, you also uh, talked about a, a, a deal you made with the mayor of of, of Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we challenged during the last FAP conference in Barcelona in July this year, 2014, we, we challenged the mayor of Barcelona, Xavier Trias, to, to press a button that will, uh, let's say, will set uh, or will launch a, a, a countdown for Barcelona to be totally self-sufficient or at least 50% self-sufficient, let's say, in 40 years. So it means that the city recovers the ability of produce things locally and exchange knowledge lo uh, globally. No? So, that's something that we we are you know trying to, to promote and to, and to start. And what steps has to be made? Uh, 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 every change ha has to yeah. start with one step. And you're uh, with your organization really good also in using the crowds yeah. uh, to do things. You also use some crowdfunding campaigns uh, for the smart city projects. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are the concrete first steps you're making now to to, to get there in the goal yeah. uh, in 40 so years? The, the main channel to I mean or, or the main tool to do this is digital fabrication. So it means, uh, let's say, the widespread of digital fabrication tools in almost every level of our life. If you think about computation and communications, they had been digitized, but fabrication is not digital yet. So if you think about also uh, how when we were at school, you know, some years ago, or even our parents, they were going to school without computers. And now kids and everyone is depending on how compu and computers and connectivity in the world. Most, uh, the majority of, of uh, at least the Western world, let's say. You know? Then um, if you think about how digital fabrication can change also the way we produce, consume, and relate with each other, it's huge. It means that people can, can produce things locally, but this, could, this should come from the schools. Well, and from every level, of, as I said, from every level of our life. We started already in Barcelona to de uh, deploy um, citywide infrastructure of public fab labs. That means that as you got, have access to a library to get some books or to go to study, you get an access to a, spa to a space to learn how to make things by using laser cutter, 3D printers, or programming circuit boards. And that's happening today. There, is, there are already two public fab labs, and th there are another, at least eight more coming in the coming years. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, you're really getting there in 40 years. I hope. Uh, let's, <laughs> let, let, let's do it in 20. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. <laughs>